Yeah, hey, Mike, I, I had posted in the uh, Facebook group last week about um, conversion tracking. Google Tag Manager. Yeah. And using, uh, putting the pixel in, I guess, in, in the same spot as the Facebook pixel, or do you need to create a separate landing page? How exactly is that working? Because I haven't been able to figure it out. I've just started running some YouTube ads. I'm just tinkering with those as well. Uh, but it's not, it says, I, I guess, for my conversion event, it's saying, you know, it's not finding a pixel. Gotcha. So, okay. So, two things. Um, first off, I would not like, the pixel you want to make sure that your pictures are file pixels are filing firing correctly for the purpose of uh retargeting but as far as as far as reporting conversions and tracking conversions we stopped using pixels as a way to do that like four years ago when apple started their war against advertisers basically um and actually they started it a long time long time before that where where we got close enough to their war against uh, advertisers that it affected us. But basically um, on any Apple device, they have intelligent tracking prevention is this thing that they have in place where it's, it's designed to block all third party cookies. A third party cookie is a cookie that is owned by Google or owned by Facebook and on your website, which is not owned by Google and not owned by Facebook. That's considered a third party cookie. You can put your own cookies on somebody's browser as long as they've consented to them as much as you want but as soon as it's a pixel that's being fired by google's you know it, it, google servers on your site that's considered third party and apple's going to do everything they can to block it so the solution for that is actually the easiest one i mean we, the the solution used to be really complicated and difficult and now it's way easier thanks to high level um the solution to that is make sure that your forms and serve like whatever call to action whatever form you're having them fill out survey you're having them fill out i mean what's your what's your funnel can you describe your funnel a little bit to me yeah so it basically just takes them to a landing page it's a survey funnel like you described i'm targeting uh refinance uh, refinances i'm up in canada so uh there's still opportunities here for refinance yeah. and transfers because our terms are a lot different than what you guys have there uh, there's a lot always refi opportunity up there right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure um so basically it's uh, focusing on debt consolidation people are in over their heads with debts they take them to a landing page with a survey you know what are you looking for first mortgage second mortgage what's the balance on your current mortgage etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. and then they hit submit takes them to a thank you page where they can book a time in my calendar if they do not book a time in my calendar, that's when the automations fire off where the texts and the voicemails start going out. Okay. And then where are the points that you're wanting to send data to Google or Facebook for the conversion well, data? You know, my, maybe I'm wrong on this now. Maybe it's changed over the years. But, you know, my thought was if the pixel is in the thank you page, then Google and Facebook can start saying, okay, these are the people who are hitting the thank you pages. Let's find more of those people. Correct. That's why that I thought the pixel... Was that was always the have. simplest way to do it. That was, and it was the most accurate way to do it for a long time too. But with the tracking prevention and stuff, the, like what the better way to do now is every, everything that Facebook or Google sends to your site has what's called a click identifier inside the URL. So um, I'll show you what this looks like in the form of a Google ad really quick, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't change, um, you know, YouTube. If you click on a YouTube ad, it's going to have the same thing. Um you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oops, wrong one. Uh, if we go to Google and I type, um, you know, how much house can I qualify for? Okay. DL Evans is this first one. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Now watch my URL. Okay. I'm going to DL Evans, but check this out right here. Mm -hmm. So this is a URL parameter, question mark, GCLID equals, and then it's this whole long obfuscated string. What this obfuscated string is, is it's an identifier that Google has associated in their database to like every click on and every interaction on their, on Google carries one of these identifiers. And then it's connected to the database where they say, oh, this click belonged to this user who belongs in these demographics and lives in this area. And like, that is their way of tying what they send to you to their entire in ecosystem of data without violating anything that Apple's trying to block. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what they, Google needs that click identifier. That's what Google needs. Facebook has the same thing. And you don't have, like, it used to be that we would have to, 
log these with every form submission that somebody submitted and then keep it in a database and then upload that database to Google every hour to give all this information to them. It's so much easier than that nowadays. Nowadays, what you can do is you set up, you first off, you have to set the conversion up, the offline conversion up inside of Google and inside of Facebook. But once you've done that and you've linked your Google ads accounts in here and your, and your Facebook ads account, your conversion actions are as easy as coming in here and going, add to Google AdWords. What's your conversion? You know, this. And then if it didn't come from Google, it's the 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 tap it's going to fail it's not going to work because there's no gclid to send but if you set up a a workflow that has you know anytime you get a new contact add you know, or or uh maybe it's not new contact but it's that form submission right like when somebody mm -hmm. submits this survey send the conversion to google adwords send it to facebook ads is the next one that you're going to do so you come in here facebook and you can either do it for through the conversion API, or you can just add them directly to a custom audience if you want to do that. But you're basically, you're do, like all that GCLID and that Facebook, the FBCLID, the Facebook click identifier, they live in high levels world behind the scenes. You can see um, in hindsight, if we go here, let me see if I can do this without, oh shit. Okay. So, all right. So we've got these people. So in hindsight, we can come in here and see social so we have this session source in the right hand corner that attribution right there see that long facebook yeah. cs is fb click id yeah yeah that's how face that's how high level was able to identify that this was a conversion that needed to get sent to facebook and how facebook was able to identify what ad interaction that was and connect all those dots okay so as long so as long as you set up as long as you set up within whatever your automations are sending the conversions when you want those conversion actions to be sent you're you're going to see all that stuff clean up so high level will send information back to google or facebook saying this is a conversion and it'll track conversions that way exactly you have to in define... my google ads manager it'll say oh now i've got one conversion for example exactly exactly now you have to uh, now on the ad side i mean i'm assuming that you've set up the conversion inside of ads right inside yeah. of ads you got to go in you got to set up the conversion event you got to set it up as an offline tell them that you're going to be uploading so it's uploading an offline. conversions okay. right exactly and then when you do that when you come in here i mean I'll, i can show you like uh new demo scheduled there we go so we have the event right here, right? Add to Google AdWords. The conversion is that. So mm -hmm. we have all these conversions in our Google AdWords account, and we just define within the action and high level which one we want to send over. And then we do the same thing with the Facebook. Okay. If they came from Google, can high level find them in Facebook too and add them to a custom audience in Facebook for retargeting pur purposes? Um, yeah, they're only going to be able to use the information you provide them. So, you know, you're going to provide them at that point, their email address and their phone number, maybe. Mm -hmm. And if the, as long as they can cross reference that information to somebody in their database, then it'll happen. Um, so yeah, I, I set it up as a step just in case every time, cause I'd be silly not to, but I, you know, maybe the match rate is 60, 70% or something like that. I don't, I don't know what the match rate is, but, um, that's kind of how that works. Okay. So when you right. add to when you add to an actual audience, like it's easy to set up the actual the action and then um, high levels integration with Facebook defines like what fields it sends over. So again, it's going to be name, email address, phone number. Um, that some of that information has to be encrypted. High levels ha handling all that for you, and then Facebook's going to say, okay, we're going to add this person to your custom audience. Um, and so it's not actually it's actually I, I think I'm I'm almost positive it's more robust than just do they match somebody yes or no if no sorry you're shit out of luck i think it's like you're adding their names to the, your database and if ever their information comes up in a match now you're going to be able to target them within that audience got it okay